Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Olif Podcast, where we discuss educational and relevant topics about Olympic weightlifting. My name is Anton Jefferson. And I'm JP Nicoletta. Welcome to another episode of the Olif Podcast. Today, we're talking to Josh Cox, who is the editor of the Lifting Times, which is a, a free magazine based out of the UK. We thought it would be interesting to talk to Josh for a couple of reasons, one of them being that he's one of the few people doing a magazine. And we're going to get into a lot about content, how do we produce content. Uh, and then we're going to even talk a little bit about the status, I hope, of, of British weightlifting because uh, there are some parallels there and I think there's some interesting things going, over, going on over there. Um, but before we get started... Yeah, let's talk about Black Tape. We got Black Tape. Check it out on our website at theolifmag.com. Click on Shop. It's great tape. Once you remove it from your workout, there's no leftover residue, and it also stays on your thumb for your entire workout. Uh, check us out again, theolifmag.com at our shop. And remember to use the promo code BLACK10 for a 10% discount on your next order. We will head over to the discussion with Josh. Hope everyone enjoys. We'll be back with new episodes soon. Thanks, everyone. With us, Josh, thanks for taking a little bit of time. Before we get into the Lifting Times magazine, why don't you give us a, a little background on yourself and how you got started in weightlifting? Yeah, absolutely. So I first started when I was about 12 years old. Uh, at my school, there's a, a dedicated weightlifting club, which is it's rather unusual for a, a, a school to have that in the UK, where one of about four or five. The coach there, he's a fantastic guy, been coaching for about 30 years plus. He put a bit of a, a tryout for all of our year, which I was just sort of lucky enough to get selected, one of about to, to come back the following year and start weightlifting. From there, I, I sort of fell in love with it. I was training five times a week, and then at the age of 16, I got selected to be part of the Great Britain squad. From there, I've represented Great Britain in a, a number of international competitions. I've won an international uh, Grand Prix in Austria. No, no, I've been sort of all over Europe, lifting for both club and, and Great Britain. And that was absolutely incredible just to see the different cultures. And so I've been lifting now for about 12 years. I'm 23 years old and coaching for the best part of about five years. I mainly coach as a, a volunteer lifter for the school, um, sort of giving back from obviously what my coach put in. You're probably aware I do sort of private sessions as well to, to bring in a bit of, uh, bit of income and sort of programming for local lifters. And that's pretty much me. I, I've so yeah, I've got, I've got. I guess I've got quite a bit of experience, uh, even though I'm not, not the oldest person that has, that's ever done weightlifting. Off of that, it's a good spot, I think, to transition into the lifting times and and what got you thinking about creating that and building a, a magazine type thing. And the reason why, because Anton had the vision of starting Olift as a magazine, it was a tough choice to make because of how weightlifting I think is digested now in yeah. a lot of short form and Instagram visual type stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the magazine, what you were thinking when you built it and, and what you focus on with it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I really sort of first had the idea back in October, 2015. Um, but at that, stage, at that stage, it was just a bit of a, a concept and I never thought it would be where I am today. It, it started out as a, a print magazine. I really got onto it because there wasn't actually a sort of a, a media for weightlifting in the UK. There's there are a few blogs and, and there's sort of a, a few key athletes to follow, but there wasn't actually a, a sort of a consigned media that can report on competitions, that can share advice and share articles with people that are, are learning to lift. And it was about the time when CrossFit is really just was really taking off in the UK. So there's more and more people starting out in weightlifting that are looking for that information. Um, it was a free magazine uh, delivering to sort of local CrossFit boxes and, and, and weightlifting clubs. How many issues did you get printed? So the first one, we printed 2,000 issues um, and they absolutely got snapped up. So the response I had was absolutely phenomenal. It's, oh, finally, we've got something that we can flick through and read and learn from. And that's what sort of propelled it to go on to the second issue. Now, the second issue, oh, we upped it to about 4,000 circulation, reaching more more CrossFit clubs, more weightlifting clubs, reaching more competitions. So I'd take about 200, 250 to a, a competition and hand them out as 
as people will be entering, picking up a programme, I'll grab you a free copy of Lifting Times. But by the time the third issue came around, I must admit, it had to go digital just because I, be, I couldn't keep up the printing costs against the advertising revenue. That's the killer that people yeah. really don't understand on the back end of a magazine that it's really tough to, to juggle and keep that ratio in the green. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, but I mean, there was always there's always been a good call for weightlifting information. So it went online as a, a downloadable um, magazine. And yeah, I just I kept on getting subscribers. They were pouring in and wait for the latest articles and lifting times and, and the latest magazine. One of the things that I think you promote the magazine as is let lifting times be your virtual coach is one of the things that I picked up. Is is that what you're trying to accomplish? I mean, where is the main focus and goal of what you're writing about? Yeah. So, I mean, the Let Lifting Times Be Your Virtual Coach it was a bit of a, a marketing uh, sort of strategy. Um, I mean, obviously, we, when you're learning Olympic lifting, we'd always recommend you, you get a coach, which is the most sensible thing to do because it, there can be a lot that goes wrong and you need a coach so to have a keen eye. With you there. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I mean, this is for people that want to read around the sport, especially in CrossFit clubs, where in the UK, a lot of the, the CrossFit clubs, they'll, not all of them, but some of them, they'll, they'll get you in and they'll teach you a rough power clean. And they'll just say, OK, do 30 of those at 60 kilograms. And that would be sort of their Olympic lifting. Um, that would be all their coaching. It's getting better now. But and that was the main sort of the, the main readership that we had as a crossfitters coming over looking for olympic lifting information to improve their technique to help out their crossfit so they can be more efficient in maybe lifting 60 kilograms 30 times so that was our sort of main readership and the virtual coach was we do cover a lot about um, sort of going through the basic technique points of the snatch the clean and jerk uh, we do cover sort of assistance exercises in the magazines we, pretty much everything really but it is designed more for those beginners to intermediate people because I guess when you get to an experienced and advanced level that you do really need to have specific coaching which read a much uh, read a lot around the subject or just brush up on their technique tidy it all up and make their lifting more efficient that's the that's the reader to go for I mean those are the guys that are going to gobble up all the information you know they're they're searching they're not lurking they're searching for information yeah (laughs) So where do you come up with um, your ideas for content? Well, I mean, in, in the very beginning, it was pretty much just me that was sort of writing the articles. Um, I had help from a fellow lifter, Ben Watson. He's a Commonwealth Games bronze, medal, uh, bronze medalist. And he's a fantastic guy and, and, and lifter and coach himself. Um, so we'd sort of do a few articles. He'd help uh, sort of proofread all the magazines. Um, and I'd also speak to my coach as well, Philip Carlson of St. Brynus Weightlifting. And we just sort of get a few ideas from there. And then as it as Lifting Times has grown, I've had people uh, email me with different articles they'd like to write and coming up with different ideas. So that's how it's kind of grown from there. And I don't know, I guess so we, we do take a few requests if people are looking for certain bits of information. So we recently did a, an article on schools lifting. It's a uh, schools competition. Sorry, it's different to adult competitions in the, in the UK. So schools lifting is all about technique. So they get technique points for the correct positions, the correct form as well as obviously the weight lifted but it, it's opposed to adult competitions where it's just weight lifted and, and body weight so I had a we did an article because a, a parent was requesting some information we did an article about how the point system works how the whole sort of entry works and, uh, and, and it proved hugely successful actually I had a about a thousand hits or so in one day just it's absolutely fantastic and I don't know I think with weightlifting it there's a lot to it. Although there's two main lifts, there's a lot to it. There's always assistant ex- assistant exercises you can cover. There's Definitely. different there nutritional um, sort of supplementation and different tra- training techniques and equipment. There's always something, yeah. For my blog site, I absolutely write about whatever I want. You know, yeah. I, I don't really um, have a system where I'm taking data necessarily. I think of something that I think is interesting and I and I go with it. Some things are more popular than others. Anton, I think you take a similar approach with Olift and the content you produce in that some things take, some things don't. I mean, the most read articles that I think I had written, one was about costume and what you can wear <laughs> in a competition. You know, yeah. like what is, you know, what is allowed and what's not. The other one was the body weight advantage rule. Yeah when I had written about that before it, it happened. Yeah. My most favorite article for you was uh, when you wrote about where to sit in the, in the warm up area. 
I think that was fantastic. That's brilliant. That's yeah. Yeah, I, I sort of t- took a play off of where you sit in a boardroom at like yeah. a business meeting, whether you're at the head of the table or not. And you talked about Ilya with the 2014 Worlds. Like, that was amazing. Point is, is where do you find the balance, Josh, of that deeper dive style, long form content versus things that you feel like will get clicks? Like, where do you play? in your head on the, on that we don't actually we don't actually think about that too much we we, we write articles and we, we i mean obviously there are some articles that you do go into a lot more detail but we do try and keep it as concise um as possible sort of the, the shortest sort of article around while giving the most information getting the most information across to the reader and we, we sort of like that style because weightlifting if you do go into a lot of detail it can be quite uh, difficult to digest if you're new to the sport or yeah, I, I, I'm not too sure if there's an actual balance between the, the, the long articles and the, the short sort of uh, impact articles. No. How many uh, people do you have on, on your staff? Like how many team members do you have? The, the people that write for the magazine, there's about eight contributors that, that submit articles. Uh, every... And they're, they're like regular contributors? Yeah, sort of every um, every month or so they'll they'll drop by an article, and that's merely that's really just to one they like giving back to the uh, to the Olympic lifting community, um, and it raises their profile too. So whenever someone comes on board as a, a writer for Lifting Times, will we'll generate their own profile on Lifting Times. So they, I don't know, if they wanted to say, oh yeah, we're, I'm a coach and I I do this with my own blog, and I've also written for Olympic. Uh, lifting magazine lifting times here's my profile you can see all my articles so that's how i mean that's why sort of people do it. i mean we don't offer any sort of monetary value for articles just because the magazine it doesn't make uh, much money at all it's just there to be enjoyed what would you say is the hottest topic right now in weightlifting Whew, um, besides, besides shoes besides <laughs> uh, well <laughs> ever since shoe, shoe articles <laughs> yeah, ever since you know Adidas have, have uh, released theirs and, and Reebok, the, the, uh, the legacy lifters, it has been <laughs> going a bit crazy. But the article that I've seen draw the most attention is, as I was saying earlier, schools lifting, um, because that's just something that's not covered in the UK. I mean, it's a pretty big uh, sort of competition, the schools championships, but there's not a lot of info about it. So that was quite a big eye opener for us to share that. And it gets quite a few clicks a day, even though that the article was a good few weeks ago. But probably the most popular with general weight lifters is any article about the jerk, I think. Really? The jerk or potentially the snatch. I mean, most people get the clean down to a T when they're learning Olympic lifting. It's it's more of the snatch, the, the hip explosion on the snatch and the jerk just... Uh, sort of technical um, details on how to fix a jerk or the correct position, the, the dip and drive mainly is uh, what we see the most clicks through. Yeah, what do, you, what do you see the most? What's the craziest thing is that if if you do one of those, not like clickbaity articles, but you you know the five uh, important people in weightlifting right now, you know, and oh, it, was, okay. it was obviously subjective. And <laughs> I, I think it's something you should do. Like in the UK, obviously it, it, would, it yeah. would do well. But it was just people who I was connecting with that month, and I felt yeah. as though they weren't getting enough recognition for what they're doing, you know. So it'd be like this youth athlete who just broke, you know, a ton of records that maybe stood stood for, you know, over a decade or something. And this uh, people love that, and also our, our community is. I mean, it used to be very small, but people love drama. So I try to stay away from, you know, reposting anything newsworthy. Mm, to where yeah. we focus mostly on just lifting, where it's like it's timeless pieces that you can go back again and again. That's that's the difficult thing to juggle and balance because people are like, all right, you know, show me something juicy. And it's like, it's not that fancy. It's, it's a snatch and a clean turn. Josh is, is talking about what I think gets the most attention are technique-related pieces or, or content based yeah. on technique. Yeah. Uh, put it this way, Josh. I'm glad you didn't say drugs is the number one story. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like things like that. Maybe so, not in that country. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> England's, uh, the UK is actually, it's, it's very tight on its, uh, yeah, its drug man. controls of yeah, Adams. Yeah. And, and, and so so why, don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about British weightlifting? I think there's a lot of similarities between US weightlifting and British weightlifting. So I'm curious to know of like the status there or where the sport is and going. And and I know that you also had a major budget cut that hurt a couple of years ago. Where are things 
uh, just just going back to the beginning. So, so when I started weightlifting sort of 12 years ago, we could g go to a competition and you'd show up and and you'd see the the same faces, which was it was a nice sort of um, a nice friendly atmosphere, and it, it still is today. But um, and this was really what I'd call sort of before CrossFit actually. And it was you go to a competition, you compete against the same sort of people, you meet the same coaches, everyone got on really well. I mean. But since uh, maybe about five years ago, uh, around the sort of the, the London Olympics and when cross CrossFit was was really taking popularity, nowadays it's it's really just shot up and more CrossFitters are doing CrossFit and then they come over to weightlifting and they, they realise they, they actually love the sport uh, maybe a little bit more than CrossFit or want to get involved with it more than just being a, a, a side part of CrossFit and and that's really been a big change and that's introduced a lot more money into the into the sport. British weightlifting has gone through quite a few changes in the past few years. Um, it's got a, a new CEO after the sort of restructuring of the after London 2012. Uh, it's got a lot more money. It's rebranded itself. So that has yeah, changed. I just, uh, I just thought uh, that uh, Tommy Yule uh, changed his position. That's something interesting to talk about as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know he was was it the performance director before yeah. or yeah, yeah so I, the English Institute of Sport. It's like his thing. He's performance director, obviously head coach there, and um, he's he's doing a different role now. But that that's quite interesting to see that you know where you guys have come along and the restructuring and how it's continuing to you know evolve. Although I think we we lost out money for the the next Olympics, we've got some money for the Commonwealth Games. Uh, I, America, unfortunately, aren't in the Commonwealth Games. We've hey, got well, I'll, I'll USA. Be it's in uh, it's in got, what is Gold, it? Gold Coast. Coast. Gold yeah, Coast, be yeah, day, man. be a nice place to uh to meet, a nice uh, sunny beach and whatnot. Yeah, we we secured some funding for the Commonwealth Games, but unfortunately we did miss out on the Olympics. Look, I guess you can go into the Olympics for a number of reasons. It's it tends to be a lot of the the Eastern Bloc countries that do well. Uh, you can always throw uh, arguments around that you know their drug control isn't quite so um, strenuous as maybe the the US or the UK's, but we are getting a lot better. I mean, Rebecca, for around the 10th mark, which is fantastic. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, but unfortunately, in the eyes of uh, in the eyes of UK sport, it just wasn't enough. Yeah, I think it's I think it's tough is for weightlifting because people don't understand how difficult it is to place. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody questions that. I mean, I think people get it. Uh, it it's just it, it's fascinating for me to hear the near direct parallel Josh, that you talk about there versus what we've experienced here with the simultaneous growth of the sport with the sport funding from the government going away. Because I mean, we had the same thing. Our Olympic Training Center closed, but we are arguably better cash position than we had been for years. We have more activity that we've had for years. And I think the talent has been coming up with it as long as the appetite for the type of stuff that we've been doing in terms of written content and everything else. So it's sort of fascinating to see the exact same happening or the exact same thing happening. Going back, I'd say going back sort of 10, 10 years or so, the, the, the places where you'd lift would be a bit of a, it'd be a sports leisure center that sort of kitted out to, to turn into a weightlifting competition. I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with that. Compared to nowadays where there is a bit more funding, it's a bit more structured. Now it's, it's lovely sort of open theaters, hundreds of seats, a nice platform, a nice stage, big warm-up areas. And we are producing, I guess there's more funding, there's more people partaking in weightlifting, a, a sort of a higher higher aptitude of, of, of lifters than we were maybe 10 years ago. But and unfortunately, although we are getting very, you know, we're, we're doing well in the Olympics, 10th is, is absolutely fantastic. I know Jack Oliver got 10th in the London 2012 Olympics, which is absolutely fantastic. But so what about you, Josh? Where are you going to be focusing over the next couple of years? What are you going to be keyed in on? Is it your lifting? Are you looking to do more uh, as a coach? Or are you going to be a producer of content? I mean, like, where do you see your track taking you? I've almost sort of retired from competition lifting. Um, I mean, I've been doing it for 12 years. And you know how you get your, your knees start to ache a little bit and your back starts to ache a little bit. And, oh, yeah, um, JP knows. Oh, Oh, the younger people just seem that much better. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be doing the odd competitions, but I'll be more focusing on on lifting and uh, on on coaching, sorry, and, and and producing content through through lifting times. And 
I run a, a web design business as well, um, which takes up a lot of my time too. That's that's where I'll be looking for in the next few years. And I, I'll always still go to the gym two, three times a week to, to focus on my lifting, keep in shape. Because I do genuinely, I just I absolutely love the sport. Yeah. Hey, Josh, yeah. I think we're all on the same boat there, you know. Where, um, is that the same for you guys, is it? Yeah. <laughs> JP, yeah. JP has a setup in the garage, I'm sure. And um, I, I, I do a lot of coaching these days and I mean, working full-time job and just trying to get – get things going for the greater good of other people. So it's yeah. a, it's a worthy sacrifice. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, so can we talk about shoes now? I know, I, know JP <laughs> <hates> shoes, but <laughs> I, I saw that you guys did a review on the new Adidas. Yeah. Shout out to Adidas. They sent me the black pair, by the way, and I've yet to do a review yet because I've been, I've been taking a little time to to lift in them, but what what do you think, man? I know I, I reviewed your article, but I want to know what you think again. Um, no, about the shoes. I absolutely love them. I, uh, we we got sent the black pair too, and I, I was hoping I, for the blue pair, right? They look. So uh, they cool. they do look. They do. Uh, I think a bit because of color, color obviously looks matter. nice, but um, <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know. I guess for a review, it was just kind of the 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 fit and the comfort and. And how you actually feel lifting. Yeah. But no, I, I love them, and um, I love the BOA. I, I hope lifting shoes will continue to use that BOA technology. Yeah. I, I don't I'm, think I'm 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 still torn right now because like I'm a traditional kind of wooden heel lover, and yeah. and then I got used to the 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 Adi Powers, and yeah. then and then now these they just they feel like a like a basketball shoe. Like I <laughs> I, I will say this, I feel as though. Obviously, the money is in CrossFit, and so people... Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. Before you even do that, Anton, I'm going to cut you off. BOA? That's the little dial in the center to fast. Ah, so it's like okay. the, Thank back you. in the day when you guys had the pump-up shoes, JP, now we oh. have technology that <laughs> twist and turn. We don't have to tie them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the BOA system is just basically a, the strap. It replaces the strap in the middle, and you can tie them down. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I just feel like everybody's losing that that soul, you know, that traditional feel, and it has to come from weightlifting. It can't come from another company trying to sell a $400 shoe because, you know, they got, they got the buzz of CrossFit. It has to come from weightlifting. It has to come from Adidas and Nike. So, I mean, I, obviously, I don't, I don't know their business, but we're, we're starving for a traditional shoe after these, these two releases. Well, I mean, I, I personally think the, the, the Leistung uh, 16.2, I think, I mean, I wouldn't call them a CrossFitter shoe. No, not yet. Not yet. No. <laughs> um, just just purely because, I mean, they have got a, a thicker heel than sort of typical. If you look at yeah. a CrossFit shoe, they're normally yeah. a bit more adaptive, lightweight, yeah. which I think is, is more sort of Reeboks. Um, mm. so they, they've they've yeah. covered that market well and truly. I think Adidas competition shoe, um, I think they've done well giving both the laces and the BOA compared to the the Leistung one uh, 16.1s that were just the BOA because I think I think people as much as uh, as much as they like to look forward to the future it's nice to have that sort of laces in your weightlifting shoes gives you that sort of uh sort of old, old school weightlifting feel I think yeah they they got to come out with something I mean they they somebody at Adidas is listening or, or reading Reddit and hearing people screaming for like yeah. the 2008 <laughs> You know, Adi stars bring those back. Uh, I yeah. saw a photo of you wearing them. I know you probably still have, you know, have those. Oh, and, I, I still know, train in them. Shoes. There you go. See, like They're, if they brought those back, they would sell out. They would sell out. Absolutely. I, I, I don't think I'll ever get rid of them. I mean, it's just yeah. that sound when you're when you're catching a snatch on Second a platform. To none, man. Is you know? oh. yeah. I remember I used to when I used to coach at CrossFit clubs. I used to go around and. They'd all wear their Reebok shoes, their Reebok trainers, or the, the Reebok lifting style shoes, and they'd wonder how I'd make that that, that loud, sort of snappy sound when I'm catching a snatch or doing snatch balances or power cleans, anything. And it, it, most of it, I mean, some of it is technique, but most of it is just that thick wooden heel, which is what you were saying earlier. You just can't. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I will. I will give credit to uh, Reebok. I haven't tested their new shoe, and you know, I'm not. An ambassador or anything like that but uh cj cummins has done pretty well in the new legacy he's done you know upwards yeah. of 180 plus kilo clean and jerk so he would do well with a pair of tires like <laughs> i think he it would, he would be matter. the first you know lifter to break a world record in chuck taylor so <laughs> <That's right. laughs> all right uh i am very happy and, and thank you so much for taking some time to come chat with us 
Where can we find you? Um, so yeah, so the website is liftingtimes.co.uk. Yes, I know a uh, .co.uk is because we are British. It's or, or at Lifting Times is our, our Facebook uh, uh, username or just on directly straight to our website. Uh, we're also on Twitter and Instagram at Lifting Times. If you search that in, you'll be able to find us. And yeah, we, we keep up to date. Um, we post our articles as soon as they're published onto our social media. From the website, you can sign up and get the latest copy of Lifting Times sent straight to your inbox and you'll be kept up to date with articles too. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Please keep doing what you're doing. And we uh, hope to be in touch with you again in the future. Thanks so yeah, much. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much for having me on.